In Matthew chapter 19 and verse 14, the Lord Jesus said something that he fairly commonly said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. On several occasions, the Lord Jesus told people that the only way in was to humble themselves and become like little children. And I'm sure we've all been impressed with the story of the the little girl in Naaman's house. We know that from the testimony of the Lord Jesus, no lepers in Israel had been healed. So this little girl didn't have a long history of hearing stories about healed lepers in Israel. She had faith in God and believed that God could do this. Or the story of the boy with the lunch. What difference would that make? Or the story of Paul's nephew who bravely broke up the plot to kill his uncle on a journey up to Caesarea. Or the child Samuel. All of these stories have thrilled us. And uh, those of us who have little grandchildren and hear their expressions of faith and their understanding of spiritual things warm our hearts, thrill us as we, as we see this. Well, I'm going to read you a little story today. It comes from a book by Matthew Hale Smith. He lived back in the 1800s in Portland, Maine. Originally, he'd been a Congregationalist minister, but had seen the error of his ways, and he had trusted the Lord, and um, he became an evangelist, a, a missionary for the cause of Christ. He later wrote a book in defense of the gospel called Universalism, Not of God. Anyway, he tells this story in his book called Marvels of Prayer. And I'll just read the little story to you. He says, I came home one night very late and had gone to bed to seek needed rest. The friend with whom I boarded awoke me out of my first refreshing sleep and informed me that the little girl wanted to see me. I turned over in bed and said, I'm very tired. Tell her to come in the morning, and I will see her. My friend soon returned and said, I think you better get up. The girl is a poor little suffering thing. She's thinly clad, no bonnet, no shoes. She seated herself on the doorway and says, she must see you and will wait till you get up. I dressed myself and opened the outside door and saw one of the most forlorn-looking little girls I ever beheld. She looked up to my face and said, Are you the man that preached last night and said that Christ could save to the uttermost? Yes. Well, I was there, and I want you to come to my house and try to save my poor father. What's the matter with your father? He's a very good father when he don't drink. He's out of work and he drinks awfully. He's almost killed my poor mother. But if Jesus can save to the uttermost, he can save him. And I want you to come to our house right now. He says, I took my hat and followed my little guide, who trotted on before, halting as she turned the corners to see that I was coming. Oh, what a miserable den her home was. A low, dark, underground room, the floor all slush and mud, not a chair, table, or bed to be seen. A bitter cold night, and not a spark of fire on the hearth, and the room not only cold but dark. In the corner, on a little dirty straw, lay a woman. Her head was bound up, and she was moaning as if in agony. As we entered the doorway, a feeble voice said, Oh, my child, my child, why have you brought a stranger into this horrible place? Her story was a sad one, but soon told. Her husband, out of work, maddened with drink, had stabbed her because she didn't provide him with a supper, though there was no food in the house. He was then upstairs, and 
She was expecting any moment that he would come down and complete the bloody work he had begun. While the conversation was going on, the man made his appearance. A fiend he looked. He brandished the knife, still wet with the blood of his wife. The missionary, like the man among the tombs, had himself belonged to the desperate classes. He was converted at the mouth of a coal pit. He knew the disease and the remedy, knew how to handle a man on the borders of delirium tremens. Subdued by the tender tones, the madman calmed down and took a seat on a box. But the talk was interrupted by the little girl, who approached the missionary and said, Don't talk to father. It won't do any good. If talking would have saved him, he would have been saved long ago. Mother has talked to him so much and so good. You must ask Jesus who saves to the uttermost, to save my poor father. Rebuked by the faith of the little girl, the missionary and the miserable sinner knelt down together. He prayed as he had never prayed before, entreating the Lord for mercy for this man, and interceded for him in tones so tender and fervent that it melted the desperate man who cried to God for mercy. And mercy came. He bowed in penitence before the Lord and lay down that night on his pallet of straw, a pardoned soul. Relief came to that dwelling. The wife was lifted from her dirty couch and her home was made comfortable. On Sunday... The rescued man took the hand of his little girl and entered the infant class to learn something about the Savior who saves to the uttermost. He had entered on a whole new life. He found good employment, and next to his Savior, he blesses God for the faith of his little girl who believed in a Savior able to save to the uttermost all that come to God by him. <laughs>